On Ticker, this is Import Export with Lawrence Christopher. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Import Export here on Ticker TV. I'm your host, Lawrence Christopher. We've got another feature packed show for you today. Uh, we've got a whole range of industry experts who can help you navigate and grow in your international trade, supply chain, logistics business. So, joining us now, we're going to go to Taris from the CBFCA. Now, mm -hmm. CBFCA, uh, as you know, the Custom Brokers and Freight Floors Council in Australia. Hi, Taris. Thanks for joining us. Morning, Lawrence. P pleasure to be here. Um, mate, so I know that we've had Zorin as a regular on, on, on the show, and uh, you and I have, have, and Zorin have talked about getting you on to ex ex emphasize and probably increase some of awareness around the sector, around all these great training programs that CBFCA do. So I'm going to ask you to touch on those and, and maybe give it a, a bit of a background to that, please, Taras. Yes, thanks, Lawrence. The CBFCA has a registered training organisation called the International Trade and Logistics College. And we are approved to deliver two diploma programs, one being the Diploma of Customs Broking, the other one being the Diploma of International Freight Forwarding. Now, the Diploma of Customs Broking, we are one of only two providers in Australia. The diploma is a two-year program and it is the prerequisite uh, qualification approved by Home Affairs and Australian Border Force to become a licensed customs broker. Mm -hmm. So upon completing the diploma customs broking, two years of mandatory industry experience, you can apply to become a licensed customs broker. Mm -hmm. The other qualification, as I said, is the diploma of international freight forwarding. It's a one to one and a half year program, and it is recognised by FIATA. Um, so upon completing the Diploma International Freight, you automatically qualify for the FIATA Diploma, which is recognised on an international basis. Yeah. That's fantastic initiatives. And I think one of the things that's happened through this lockdown, the COVID-19 tariffs, is that supply chains become exposed. People now have realised how important brokers are, forwarders are, because you can't get cargo or goods without them. Um, so it has been one of the, the great positives of this situation is that it has really brought to the forefront the importance of supply chain service providers, brokers, forwarders. Absolutely. Yeah. And the other thing that's really critical about this is having that um, development opportunity. You know, we're, we're doing so many updates with Zorin on a regular basis and, and I know you send out a, a, pretty much a couple of a week with all the changes. So to stay abreast of all the import requirements, legislation requirements, it's, it's a minefield. So to have that professional support and organisation such as the CBFCA behind you as part of a community of brokers, um, you really can't do it without that support at all. Uh, absolutely, Lawrence. And one of the things we do provide to our broker members is a CPD program. Mm. As a licensed customs broker, you must complete 30 CPD points per annum. Uh, to keep up to date, as you say, to the to the ever changing landscape in international supply chain, uh, we are currently delivering all those via uh, online webinars. Um, normally, we would have regional conferences and and a national conference. Uh, in addition to the CPD programs, we deliver uh, the Department of Agriculture's biosecurity program. It's called CBC, yeah. and um, that again is mandated if you're looking for AEP, COM or NCCC accreditation. Yeah. And do you see a growth, Taris, with um, new staff coming through and you know a younger generation, if you like, coming into the forwarding and brokerage space? The, it, that is an issue for industry. Uh, the industry faces a, an ongoing skills shortage mm. and as reported by ABF, the average age of a customs broker is... Uh, 54 years of age mm. uh, and apparently with the oldest broker being 95 years of age wow. still really? so um as far as our college goes enrollment enrollment numbers are uh static so we're not we're not seeing any any increase or any decrease but we are continuing to market our our diplomas uh, as much as we can to to schools and industry as well yeah one of the great examples that Zoran brought up on the show a couple of weeks ago was the PPE and how critical that is. You know, we've got a frontline nurses, doctors, everyone uh, who are really doing their best at the moment. And if they're incorrectly supplied with um, you know, uh, false PPE equipment, that, that's had a, a life-threatening 
risk to it. So this, again, to me, emphasises the importance of the role that brokers play because, yes, you have to do all, all this stuff on documentation, but you're ticking all the boxes on behalf of ABF and Home Affairs. Um, so it is a really critical relationship between the government and the brokers on, the, on essentially the, the forwarding front line, if you speak, so to speak. Absolutely. And as I say to our students who are, who are looking to become a licensed customs broker, you, you are representing the interests of the nation mm -hmm. um, by security, uh, financial as well. So it's a very important role and it's a position of trust. So, you know, it's, it's a rigorous program to complete. Uh, then you need to complete industry experience and then apply to the ABF uh, to, get, to get licensed. Yeah. Do they still run the Gazettes? I mean, I'm, I, I have a corporate break license many years ago, but I, I, I'm pretty sure the Gazette's still around, isn't it? That they post all the, the details through? Yes, yes, it is. And that's delivered on an online form now. I was going to ask you if it's online these days. It's been, been a while since I had to check it, I checked it out. But um, one of the other things that, uh, that's been going on with CBFCA, Tara, so there have been some other initiatives. I know that um, the, the Special General Media had to go online. Yeah, yes, it did. And uh, the the Special General Meeting was resolved and uh, the members did approve uh, the resolution for for the merger between CBFCA and AFIF, and that has a slated go live date of the first of July, mm -hmm. and we're all working um, quite hard behind the scenes to make that merger to make that merger happen. Great. Well, it's a really you know, it's a logical fit from my perspective. I think it's a great uh, great outcome for both parties, and you know, congratulations on that.